Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from, from Ireland. I'm continuing my series for A Double History about uh, the Soviet Union. Now looking at the Second World War. So uh, the Soviet Union was invaded by Germany uh, in June 1941, Midsummer's Day, which is also the anniversary of Napoleon's invasion of uh, the Russian Empire in 1812. So Hitler had some admiration for Napoleon. Walter was defeated, and Hitler thought he could outdo Napoleon. Now, I know Napoleon was racist, certainly tried to reimpose slavery in the Caribbean. Many whites were anti-black at the time, so Napoleon was averagely bad for his era. Obviously, Hitler was exceptionally evil, uh, even for any era. Um, so Hitler was angry to discover, just before Operation Barbarossa went ahead, that his country had hardly more tanks in 1941 than it had done in 1939. Some tanks had been destroyed in the invasion of Poland and subsequent battles, and not many more had been built. So Hitler was not a detailed man, a details man. He'd not kept up to speed on this and made sure that uh, the war economy really was geared to fight the Soviet Union. Um, the conquest of the Soviet Union needed far more tanks than the conquest of Poland. Um, the uh, NKVD, that's the um, People's uh, Commissariat for Internal Affairs, the Soviet Secret Service, they'd kept eyes, uh, kept an eye on German diplomats and German officials. Um, they were watching what was happening in the front to it, seeing the build-up of troops, and Hitler simply closed, sorry, Sana simply closed his mind to all these very credible reports of enemy activity, well, not quite enemy, German activity consistent with them being about to launch an invasion. In the hours before the invasion, the NKVD reported that German officials were seen in the garden of the German embassy in Moscow burning um, sheaves of documents. A German soldier of communist leanings deserted hours before the invasion was supposed to go ahead, and he went straight to the NKVD border guards, handed himself in, and he said that an invasion is beginning imminently. So um, the NKVD knew this needed to be acted upon. It was so vital that uh, they merited a phone call to Stalin in the middle of the night. And disturbing him was not something you'd do lightly. However, he adamantly refused to believe this absolute mountain of evidence confronting him. And had there been a sensible leader, someone who was rational, someone who was willing to be open-minded, the Soviet Union could have taken precautions, could have launched a preemptive attack, done so many things to at least mitigate the damage that Germany was going to do. Move units, do whatever, have the air force ready, so, dawn, 22nd of June, 1941, the invasion kicked off. Um, so, Hitler was keen to demonstrate that the Teutons would succeed where the Gauls had failed. The Luftwaffe strafed many Soviet forward positions and destroyed a lot of Soviet aircraft on the ground. Um, then Moscow was inundated with phone calls from commanders in the front line asking for orders to fight back. They were ordered not to return fire. Stalin was stunned, and he thought some German commander must have gone crazy and started a war on his own initiative. Surely Hitler could be contacted and could put a stop to such insanity. The German ambassador was summoned to explain himself. Um, uh, his Excellency said he'd striven to prevent a war, but one cannot prevent the inevitable. So he was very nervous what the, what the Soviets going to do to him. Now, in these situations, diplomats are always allowed to go home. Diplomats are never harmed, even in time of war. Because if we ever want to negotiate peace, we can only do that through diplomats. And diplomats can only go to parley with the other side if they're sure they won't be taken hostage. Um, perhaps staggeringly, the Soviet Union did abide by the Vienna Convention and allowed the German diplomats to leave via Turkey, a neutral country. Um, anyway, so the, the, ambassador, the German ambassador did confirm that these attacks were no mistake. Uh, perhaps he shouldn't have stalled for time. But only then did Stalin say Red Army commanders are allowed to fight back. By this time, a few hours have passed and thousands of Soviet troops have been killed who might have been saved if they'd been allowed to return fire. Um, anyway, so Stalin was so shocked he didn't speak in public for 10 days. Uh, he seemed to be very downcast about the Soviet Union's chances of surviving the war. Contrast this against Churchill's lionish rhetoric, which did so much to keep British spirits up even in the darkest hour. Um, so Stalin, what was he going to do to uplift the nation? Um, Stalin supposedly remarked, Lenin gave us working class people a state and we it up. Uh, however, at least one clear-headed decision was taken. 
Stalin very sensibly ordered certain factories to be disassembled and moved east of the Urals out of the range of German bombers. He finally went on the radio. He denounced this uh, treacherous and unprovoked attack. Um, he told people they could evacuate useful goods if they could, and if not, things must be destroyed. They scorched earth policies. There was the Volga German community. These were people living in the Volga Valley, and they'd been there since the mid-18th century. They'd come with Catherine the Great. Um, so they were rounded up and sent to the Gulag, often in Kazakhstan, particularly in an area called Karaganda. They were not trusted. So um, they often had preserved their German ethnic identity, spoke the German language fluently, spoke Russian too, living in a German cultural space. But they had not rebelled in the First World War. But Stalin was obviously much crueler than the Tsars. So they were sent to these camps. Men and women separated. Um, this is a bit of what was happening to the Japanese Americans at the same time. Japanese Americans hadn't been there so long. Um, and their loyalty had never been tested before, whereas the, that of the German Russians had been, or German Soviets perhaps, I should say. Um, so uh, the Japanese Americans were not separated by sex, they were not treated badly in internment, whereas these, this, this German ethnic minority in the Soviet Union was. Um, the Soviet propaganda machine labelled this the Great Patriotic War. Sometimes it's rendered into English as the Great Fatherland War. Um, so the name said it all. It was meant to be about the nation and not about ideology. Uh, the Soviet government was aware that communism was not popular. Uh, it had immiserated huge numbers of people. It had done a few good things too. So it was an appeal to national spirit. Fine if you're Russian. Uh, if you're Belarusian, they're hardly different. Ukrainians, men and women felt that could align with Russia, that was compatible with being Russian. Not if you're some of the other ethnic groups. They couldn't identify with that very much. So the name deliberately echoed that of the 1812 conflict, known as the Patriotic War. Um, so the French had, um, had been resisted by the Russian populace in 1812, um, often partisans attacking them. Um, Stalin had spent decades uh, denigrating Tsarism. And now he opened li openly likened this anti-German struggle to that fought by Alexander I. Um, and uh, he uh, then adulated the names of these uh, marshals of the Tsarist era. And uh, Alexander I was also mentioned with honor on uh, Soviet radio. There was no television, but also in propaganda newsreels, films and things like that. Stalin had bent over backwards to um, be emollient towards the Germans prior to this. The, uh, the film um, uh, about um, uh, Piotr Nevsky had been um, suspended, had not been broadcast. It was about defeating uh, uh, the Germans on Lake Papus many centuries before. But however, that was broadcast at this time. Um, the uh, Ivan the Terrible film came out uh, in 1944. And again, it was meant to be a propaganda film about how a very harsh ruler was necessary to rescue the country. So the German armed forces made thrusts deep inside Soviet territory. Their tactics were blitzkrieg, as in lightning, war. So they favoured speed above all. That had been the German uh, tactic since the mid-19th century. Bismarck, that German chancellor of the late uh, 19th century, he'd studied conflicts and said the determinative factor is speed. Not firepower, not skill in any of the other way, or even numbers, but it is speed. So Stuka dive bombers proved very effective, and they would take out enemy tanks, artillery, anything like that, leaving just infantry. Soviet um, forces were quickly surrounded by fast-moving German tanks. We often call them panzers. The English word is tank. And so um, Soviet troops, once they were surrounded, often surrendered quite quickly. So um, one prize catch was a young officer named Yakov Stalin, as in that Stalin's son. Um, so the German newsreels showed him eagerly, which of course was a breach of the Geneva Convention. Geneva Convention, obviously the Verm Wehrmacht broke that convention on a huge scale. They had declared war to the reply, but also they were very racist, they said the Soviet people were subhuman, and they treated people barbarously. Um, so uh, Hitler had offered to exchange um, Yakov Stalin for a senior ranking German officer, but that never happened. That happened later in the war. Also, the Soviets had almost no German prisoners right at the beginning, no, no soldiers anyway. Um, Stalin was an egalitarian, well, sometimes, so he wouldn't uh, give preferential treatment to his own son. However, he had a very low uh, opinion of this son of his. Yakov had once tried to top himself, and Stalin had scoffed. The boy couldn't even get that right. Um, anyway, Yakov Stalin was held in Sachsenhausen as a concentration camp to the east of Berlin, and he died there a couple of years later. Was it suicide, deliberately running into an electrified fence, or was it 
an accident as attempting to escape, not realizing he was electrified. Um, some people even said he was shot dead trying to escape. Anyway, the Germans um, were uh, initially jubilant because they had many uh, resounding victories to boast of. It was all very one-sided. They had hundreds of thousands of prisoners in the bag. Um, the invasion was justified on the basis that the Soviet Union was a deadly foe. Uh, the, uh, the racist uh, propaganda of Nazism had led Germans to believe that they were ethnically superior. And so far it seemed to be panning out as according to their ideology. Um, anyway, the German people were told they would never be safe while this satanic Stalin is ruling there and has so many red legions under his command. It was all going swimmingly for the Third Reich. Stalin said his men must never surrender. Uh, they must fight to the death. This order was widely being disobeyed. He was not so resolute himself and attempted to, uh, to negotiate a second Brest-Litovsk, as it were, and make concessions to the Germans so they'd go away and leave the Soviet state intact. However, it wasn't to be. The Soviet, the Third Reich rebuffed him, perhaps foolishly. They could have got so much for relatively little sacrifice, but they were going for broke. Finland had been uh, crushed under the sheer weight of numbers by a lumbering and incompetently led Red Army in the Winter War of uh, November 1939 to March 1940. The Finns then welcomed the Wehrmacht, that's the German military's liberators. Finland had lost territory to the USSR and its armed force has been re severely restricted by the USSR. So many Finns fought alongside the Wehrmacht. Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia had all been annexed by the USSR in 1940. Many of their intellectuals and politicians had been deported to slave labour camps or simply shot dead. Religion had been stamped out by the NKVD in the Baltic republics and elsewhere. So just before the Wehrmacht entered Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, the NKVD shot dead many of their prisoners. Unsurprisingly, many of these people uh, so detested um, the Soviet state that they thought anything had to be better than that. Some of them joined German-sponsored military units so they could defeat the USSR and would not have to fear Soviet mastery again. Um, so um, the Axis troops often behaved barbarously towards the civilian population. Stealing was the least of their crimes, rape on a large scale, and uh, the murder of civilians. I'm not saying caught in the crossfire. I'm not saying shooting a figure in the dark who then turns out to be a civilian, rounding up whole villages knowing exactly what you're doing, cold-bloodedly killing people, not in the heat of the moment, knowing what you're doing, with time to calm down, and deliberately shooting down civilians in huge numbers. Right, so that's enough for the moment.